hormones are little chemical messengers in our body. Messengers giving messages. And the hormones particularly are messages that affect our emotions, that affect our sexuality. And I'm surprised how many people I meet today who have hormonal imbalances. I want to begin this lecture by going through some of the symptoms that a woman may have with a hormonal imbalance. When a young girl gets or develops breasts at the age of eight and gets her periods at nine, that is a hormonal imbalance. Do you know what normal is? Most people don't know what normal is today. Normal would be between 16 and 18 years of age, but you hardly ever hear of a girl where that such a thing happens today. Most girls are getting their periods about 13. And that still is fairly reasonable, but when a young girl is getting her periods at nine, um, that is definitely a hormonal imbalance. Another symptom of a girl having a hormonal imbalance would be her very heavy periods, very painful periods. Also uh, tender breasts at um, period time, premenstrual tension is a symptom of a hormonal imbalance. How many men and women think that that is normal, but it is not. Another symptom of a hormonal imbalance in a woman would be depression, heart disease, uh, cervical cancer, also cysts on the ovaries, fibroids in the uterus, endometriosis, breast cancer. These are some of the symptoms of a woman having a hormonal imbalance. What about a man? A hormonal imbalance in a man can be revealed in a few ways. One is low sperm count, uh, PD called penile dysfunction, inability to hold an erection. Another symptom of a man having a hormonal imbalance would be prostate problems. We didn't even know what the word prostate meant 20 years ago. It's almost a household name today. Another symptom, uh, too much of a female hormone can cause a man to be effeminate and too much of the male hormone in a female can cause a woman to be masculine. So see, these are some of the symptoms of a hormonal imbalance in men and women. What I want to do now is I want to show you how the monthly cycle should run in a woman. And then I want to show you what throws the monthly cycle out. And then I want to end this lecture by showing you how you can bring that cycle back into balance. Notice that our sex hormones are made from cholesterol. Very important lipid in the human body is cholesterol. You can have too high cholesterol levels and you can have too low cholesterol levels. Anything under three is too low. In fact, ideally, a person should not go under 3.5. From cholesterol, the body makes pregnenolone, and from pregnenolone, the body makes progesterone. Progesterone is a key hormone because from progesterone, estrogen is made, from progesterone, testosterone is made, and from progesterone, our adrenal hormones are made. I'm going to explain the monthly cycle like a dance because it is like a dance. Different players come onto the stage at different times of the month. Let me introduce you to our star players in the dance. One is progesterone and progesterone is going to be wearing a green dress. And progesterone's nickname is Happy Hormone. can't have too much of this one, can we? The other player in the dance is oestrogen. And oestrogen is going to be wearing a red dress. And oestrogen's role in the human body is that of a cell proliferator, causing massive cell growth. It is oestrogen that causes a skinny young girl to develop into a beautiful, shapely woman. But if oestrogen levels remain high, that beautiful shapely woman can get out of shape. Day one of the cycle is the day that a woman begins to menstruate. And day one of the cycle, progesterone levels are low or progesterone is backstage, so to speak. Day one of the monthly cycle, estrogen levels are also low. But by day seven, estrogen levels rise up until day 11. Estrogen is now the star player in the dance. What effect does oestrogen have at this time of a month in a woman's body? Let's go to the stage 
where the dance is played out. These are the reproductive organs of a woman's body. This is her uterus. These are her fallopian tubes. These are the ovaries, and that is the birth canal. And between the birth canal and the uterus is the cervix, right in there. What effect does estrogen have at this time of the month? Estrogen causes massive cell growth in the lining of the uterus, causing the blood nest to develop. As a cell proliferator, that's what it's good at, causing massive cell growth. Estrogen is also causing massive cell growth in the ovaries, causing an egg to develop. Estrogen also causes a form of lubricant to be released in the birth canal. By day 14, a fully developed egg bursts forth from the ovary. The little filaments on the end of the fallopian tube grab that little egg and pull it up into the fallopian tubes. The fallopian tubes are ever moving forward like this, causing that egg to move up, up. The hole where the egg bursts forth develops a blister. And that blister is called the corpus luteum. I'm writing corpus luteum in green because corpus luteum is the main site of progesterone production in a woman's body. Can you see by this illustration how important it is for a woman to ovulate every month? because every month that the woman ovulates, her corpus luteum is made, ensuring proper levels of progesterone. And as you can see, progesterone is a very important hormone as the precursor for all the other hormones. So by day 14, 15, 16, estrogen is given the message it can go backstage now. No need for estrogen anymore. We have our blood nest, we have our egg, we have our lubricant. By day 14, with the development of corpus luteum, progesterone levels begin to rise. At this time of the month, progesterone is having an, a ripening effect on the lining of the uterus, putting the fili finishing touches on the uterus. I liken progesterone to the plasterers and the painters. Progesterone has another effect. As the happy hormone, it heightens a woman's mood at this time of the month to the point of increasing her sexual desire at this time of the month. But progesterone has another effect, and that is on the cervix. This little plug in here, which is the seal between the birth canal and the uterus. Let me magnify it for you and show you what's happening. Usually, the cervix looks like that, too Lips with a mucus plug. Under the effect of progesterone, the mucus plug goes, the lips come up a little tighter, and also, as well as that, a special form of lubricant is released around the cervix, designed specifically to facilitate the entry of sperm up into the uterus. So you can see the stages set for the entry of man. Did you know that between 500 and 200 million sperm are released with one ejaculation? If, if the sperm meet this cervix, very difficult to gain entry. If the sperm meet this cervix, that lubricant literally grabs the sperm and accelerates it or shoots it way up and into the uterus. It's got a long journey, a long way to go. And some of the sperm go down the wrong road. There's no road map. Some of them go down the right road and aha, they've found their prize, which is the egg. I saw a photograph one day of 15 sperm all trying to gain entry into one egg, but only one does. Occasionally two, that's when the twins share the placenta. Did you know that when the sperm gains entry into the egg, within a matter of days, there's a division to, the, to two cells. And when those two cells 
are created through the division, the DNA of a new human being is perfectly intact. What happens with, with the uh, conception of a new human being? Progesterone levels saw 200%. Whoa. No wonder we often say when a woman's pregnant, oh, she's just blossoming. That's because her happy hormone levels are nice and high. Whereas estrogen is not one hormone, estrogen is a family of three. There is estrone, often called E1, and it has strong cell proliferator action. Estradiol, often called E2, it also has strong cell proliferator action. Whereas estriol is the delicate hormone. And it is estriol levels that rise in pregnancy. Sometimes called the protective estrogen. So what happens if there is no conception? Then by day 26, progesterone levels are dropping. By day 26, estrogen levels are dropping. When both of those levels drop, then the blood supply to the uterus is cut. And when the blood supply to the uterus is cut, then the blood nest falls away. And once again, we are at day one of the monthly cycle, which is the day that a woman begins to menstruate. Before I move on and show you what causes a disruption of these hormones, I'd like to mention a couple of things. And one is a pap smear. What is a pap smear? It is a little scrape or a nick taken out of the cervix and they test for abnormal cells. Let's say a woman has a pap smear and then that night she is intimate with her husband. When sperm goes through the prostate gland of a man, it takes on an immune suppressant property. If it didn't, no sperm would survive in woman's body because her immune system would rise to attack. Because of the immune suppressant property of sperm, when woman's immune system rises to attack, because sperm is an alien, her immune, system is n her immune system is knocked back somewhat because of the immune suppressant property of sperm, and so sperm is able to get through. But let's say a woman has just had a pap smear, and her immune system is healing that wound. Then she's intimate with her husband that night, and her immune system has to stand back in the presence of sperm, and so it cannot tend the wound. Let's say she's a sexually active woman, a very sexually active woman. Let's say this is happening two nights out of three. Six months later, she has another pap smear. They happen to take a little scrape on the same spot. The test comes back, abnormal cells. What caused the abnormal cells? The first pap smear that was never allowed to heal. Women should be told that for four weeks after a pap smear, not to allow sperm to enter her. One lady said, my husband can't wait four weeks. I said, well, he must wear a condom, but the, the sperm must not enter because of the immune suppressant property of sperm. The amazing thing about the human body is memory. And when a woman, woman's husband's sperm enters her, it eventually has a memory, and so the sperm enters, her immune system rises to attack, and then it says, oh, it's all right, it's just husband, and stands back. And so the, the sperm can get through. But can you imagine how damaging it is if a woman has multiple partners, and also in the act of homosexuality? But what causes the imbalance? That's what I'd like to look at now. Number one, let's make a list. What causes the imbalance? In 1957, the first contraceptive pill was introduced to men and women. Why do I say men? Because men, of course, played a role because it's their wives that were on the pill. And I've had some women say to me, my husband said I was not to go on the pill. They knew there was something wrong. 
And the other reason men are affected, if a woman's on the pill for five or seven years before she gives birth to her man-child, then he is affected. The 1960s was called the sexual revolution. Women wanted to be able to have sex without falling pregnant. Men and women have, are, and will continue to pay a very high price for this so-called sexual freedom. What is the pill? The pharmaceutical companies grow acres and acres of Mexican wild yam. That Mexican wild yam contains a plant chemical called diostenin. And in a laboratory, diostenin can be converted to progesterone. Called progesterone because it has an identical molecular structure to the progesterone that is made in woman's body. So the pharmaceutical companies cannot patent that. They can only patent something new, something they create. So they, had a, they add a few more atoms in one area and come up with a synthetic estrogen. They add a few more atoms in another area and come up with a synthetic progesterone. It, they cannot call it progesterone, so it's called progestin or progestone. These synthetic hormones, when they're taken into a woman's body, are fed into that biochemical pathway that the body uses to make its own hormones, and it causes a disruption. And the body's not sure what's happening. There's a disruption. So it thinks, I must be pregnant. So it stops releasing the egg. Then the woman doesn't fall pregnant. But if a woman stops releasing the egg, can you see corpus luteum's not being made? Let me show you what's happening month after month on the pill. Our precursor should be progesterone with estrogen underneath. Month after month on the pill, with the synthetic estrogens, estrogen levels are rising. Month after month on the pill with no corpus luteum being made, can you see what's happening? We've got a situation sadly too common today. It's called estrogen dominance and progesterone deficiency. Estrogen is a good slave, but a bad master. Now the good slave bad master has become the master. Where are our estrogen levels now? Way up here. Where are our progesterone levels now? Way down here. And how does the woman feel the week before her period? Watch out, she'll bite your head off. The good news that I can give you today is premenstrual tension is not normal and it can be reversed. We need our happy hormone. But let's have a look at oestrogen, way up here with its cell proliferator action. Now with oestrogen levels that high, we've got cysts developing on the ovaries, we've got fibroids developing on the uterus, we've got abnormal cells deliver being developed on the cervix, we've got lumps in the breast developing, we've got breast cancer. Too much oestrogen is causing too much endometrium. Endometrium is the name of the lining of the uterus. So now the endometrium being made in excessive amount starts to wander through the abdominal wall. That's called endometriosis. You may have heard of it. And then on the 26th day when both the levels drop and the blood nest bleeds, all these pockets bleed and that causes excruciating pain for the woman. One young woman said to me that she's only 25. She said she has to be taken to hospital and knocked out for these few days every month. Her doctor said, when you go through menopause, you'll be all right. 25 year old woman, that's 25 more years of suffering. And the doctors just acknowledge that it is the high estrogen that is feeding these little pockets. What I'm going to show you today is how you can turn that around. It is the baby boomers that were first given the pill. The baby boomers are now going through menopause. How are they faring? Not well. What's happening? They're getting hot flushes, too much oestrogen. You see, oestrogen is a capillary dilator, causes all the blood to rush to the skin and the woman feels hot and the husband knows it because all the bedclothes get thrown off. Ten minutes later, they get all pulled back on again. 
causing massive cell growth so that the woman, and you wouldn't believe how many women I meet between the age of 40 and 60 who have got too much weight on the torso and they tell me I cannot shift this weight. It's impossible to shift that weight while estrogen levels are high. So this is another contributing factor in the weight gain we are seeing in Australia today, especially in the women. As a, as a cell um, or capillary dilator, estrogen in some women causes migraines at period time. It's also causing depression because of a lack of happy hormone. The woman has lost her desire for sex. And when she does have sex, it is very painful. And it's very, very sad that her husband's secretary is looking better all the time. That's a tragic situation. So she goes to the doctor. She says, I'm having hot flushes every 10 minutes. I can't bear it. I can't function. So he gives her hormone replacement therapy. Hormone replacement therapy. What is this? More synthetic hormones. It tricks the body again into thinking it's pregnant. So it stops causing the capillaries to dilate to the skin, puts all of its energies into the uterus and the breast. Six years later, the woman finds she has a lump on her breast. She goes to the doctor, he takes her off HRT immediately. Why? He knows. He knows it causes breast cancer. And if you talk to the doctor and you say, why do you do it if you know it causes it? His answer is this. He said she was suffering and it brought her relief. That is true. And he said not every woman will get breast cancer and that also is true. I feel sorry for the doctor because they're the only alternatives they have. What is HRT? More synthetic hormones causing more disruption in the hormonal balance of a woman. But some women say to me, I have all these symptoms and I have never been on the pill and neither was my mother. There is more. What causes a chicken to be fully developed in five weeks? It's a little bit scary, isn't it? This explains our six foot two sons coming out of five foot two mothers and five foot eight fathers. Where did that come from? And about young girls developing very large breasts when there's none of that in the family. When I was a little girl, we had chicken once a year and we used to get it from the farm. When I was 15 years of age, Kentucky Fried Chicken came to the nearest town. When Kentucky Fried Chicken came, that's really when Aussies started to eat chicken regularly. Chicken today, it's illegal to give them growth stimulants. So what, how they've got around that, there's a couple of ways. It can be in the pellets, the chicken pellets that they're eating. They have also been able to genetically modify the chicken so it produces more estrogen. Whatever way, they grow too big too quickly. And the human being that eats it is going to be getting some of that estrogen. If it's in the chicken, it's in the egg. What about meat? It's against the law for Australian cattle farmers to give their cattle growth stimulants. But we had a cattle farmer's wife do our program and she confirmed to me, she said, once a fortnight they knock on our door. Recently we had a young girl who worked in the, in the meat industry and she said, it used to be you stopped the growth stimulants five months before market and it wasn't picked up in the blood test. She said today it's five days. If they stop it five days before, it's not picked up in the blood test. So basically, if it's in the meat, whether it be chicken or red meat, it's in the product. What about fish? Well, when you've got 80% of women on the pill or HRT going to the toilet, the sewage goes out to sea, the fish are feeding on the sewage, they're finding female fish with male tendencies, male fish with female tendencies, Lentils are sounding more attractive all the time, aren't they? What about the girl that said, but I've never been on the pill either of my mother and I'm a vegetarian. There's more. 
plastics. Plastic contains something, many plastics today contain something called non-orphenyl. Oestrogen has a phenyl ring and that phenyl ring is the key that unlocks the door into the oestrogen receptor site on the cell. So plastics that contain non-orphenyl or bisphenyl A. Bisphenyl A is what is found lining most tins and the non-orphenyl is what makes plastic soft. So when these phenyls are in the plastics and the human being eats things that have been touching the plastic or heated in the plastic or been in the plastic for a while, can you see they're getting those oestrogen mimickers? Dr. Anna Zotto, she's an American endocrinologist. She was growing bacteria, no, she was growing cancerous breast tissue in flasks. And whenever she injected it with oestrogen, it would grow. She'd stop injecting it with oestrogen and it would stop growing. One day she came in and all night it had grown and she had not given it any oestrogen. She was puzzled by this. So she asked the people who were providing the flask, she said, have you changed the flask? They said, yes, we're now getting a flask that has non phenyl in it. It's a lot softer. So the non phenyl in that flask was feeding the cancerous breast tissue. I think it's impossible to get away from plastics. It's handy stuff, but be very mindful of food's exposure to it. You can get some plastics that don't have non-orphenyl, those hard plastics don't. If you have a kettle, get a glass kettle or a stainless steel. Just be mindful of the dangers. And babies, the plastic nappies, the disposable nappies. You can get nappies in the supermarket called Natty. And they are made out of starch. They're a little bit more expensive, but I think you'll agree with me, worth every cent. If we think we've got a hormonal problem now, you wait till these children grow up with their plastic disposable nappies and chewing on plastic rattles in plastic bottles with altered cow's milk heated in microwaves. A bit scary, isn't it? That's why education is important. That's why if you know someone has a baby, buy them two packets of Natty Nappies, all made out of starch, can be put in the compost bin, can even be put in the fire. Buy them a stainless steel milk bottle. You can get glass or you can actually get some fennel free, fennel free plastic bottles now. Herbicides, insecticides, pesticides and chemicals. All of these can break down to, to metabolites that mimic oestrogen. You see this little list, it explains the hormonal balance that's really exploding on the planet today. What I want to show you is the different oestrogens. So these are three cells and these are three oestrogen receptor sites on the cell. This one is a xenoestrogen and these chemical oestrogens are often called xenoestrogens and they are 20,000 times stronger than human oestrogen. So how big are they? They're huge. What about human oestrogen? It's about this big into the receptor site. And human oestrogen is 20,000 times stronger than plant oestrogen, or often called phytoestrogen. And it's a little slip of a thing that just slips into the cell like that. So these xenoestrogens are literally 400,000 times stronger than the plant oestrogens. Where do you find the plant oestrogens? Red clover, soy products, let me show you the soy. 
This is the so soybean grown in America today. It's called Ready Roundup. Do you know why it's called Ready Roundup? Because it has been genetically modified to resist Roundup. And one farmer told me five times before market it's sprayed with Roundup. So we've got one, two, three, four, five doses of Roundup, as well as a genetically modified soybean. That is a dangerous soybean. That soybean will increase breast cancer, will increase prostate cancer. But it's a pity to throw all soybeans out because if you can buy an organically grown, non-GMO soybean, it's probably got the most anti-cancer properties of any food on the planet. So make sure you buy soy that is organically grown, non-GMO. So how can we turn this around? If you don't turn the tap off, you're still going to be mopping up in the other corner. So number one, eliminate. Stop the pill. Stop HRT. How can we stop having babies popping up everywhere? Well, sex is two parts, so contraception should be two part. And a woman's role, I believe, is to determine when she is ovulating and, and it's obviously when she's menstruating. Ovulation isn't as easy, but her body will give her three signs. One sign is that her temperature changes. It can be as simple as her taking her temperature every morning before she gets out of bed. And she will find that her temperature will go like this, then drop and go up onto a higher plane. Though th so this drop and up to a higher plane is her indicator that she has begun to ovulate and it'll happen anywhere from day 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, even 15. So it'll be somewhere around there, but it will allow her to identify the starting point. So that's one sign. The second sign is that the cervix changes. And it can be as simple as her testing that cervix every day and just writing it on a chart. The third sign is the vaginal mucus changes. When the progesterone level's high, it's very clear and stringy compared to what it normally is. So those three signs can come together to tell her when she is safe and when she is not safe. The husband's role is to wear a condom or master the art of withdrawal in this time that she is unsafe, which will probably be around that time there. So that's how the pill can be eliminated. HRT, when this is implemented, this list that I'm giving you now, I have seen many get off hormone replacement therapy. Eliminate meat and its products, if you like, meat and its products. It really should be organic. At Misty Mountain Health Retreat, we show you how to make lentils taste fantastic. Plastics. I think it's impossible to eliminate plastics, handy stuff, but as much as you possibly can, greatly reduce them. And you can buy plastic bags made out of starch. The more people that want the plastic bags made out of starch, the more there will be. My daughter lives in Tasmania. And Tasmania has declared themselves to be a plastic bag free state. Did you know that? <laughs> so when you go shopping, you have to take your own bag. Herbicides, insecticides, pesticides really should be eliminated. As much as possible, go organic. Start growing your own. Get the chemicals out of your home. Throw all the chemicals out and bring the vinegars and the sodium bicarb and the microfiber cloths in and gumption. Are you familiar with gumption? It's sodium bicarbonate paste. Great cleaner. That's all we use at our health retreat. So that's turning the tap off. Number two, your liver is designed to eliminate excess estrogen. And it does it down one of two pathways. One is the hydroxy-2 pathway, and the other one is the hydroxy-16 pathway. When it goes down the hydroxy-2 pathway, it's literally taken out. 
When it comes down the hydroxy 16 pathway, it comes back in 100 times more toxic. So we don't want that one. We want this pathway. So what I'm going to do now is give you a list of foods, vitamins, herbs, that encourage Highway 2 and discourage Highway, we'll call it Highway, Highway 16. Cabbage family. The cabbage family contain indoles. These are a plant chemical that stimulate Highway 2 and discourage Highway 16. Vitamin B6, B9 and B12. These three vitamins stimulate Highway 2 and discourage Highway 16. Licorice, if you have high blood pressure, don't take the licorice. I'm referring to the herb. There is a tea you can buy and it's called black adder. And this tea contains licorice, peppermint and aniseed. It's quite a delicious tea. It can be as simple as having one or two cups of those teas a day. And flaxseed. Flaxseed contains lignans. And ling lignans encourage Highway 2 and discourage Highway 16. So number one's turning the tap off. Number two is stimulating the liver to eliminate excess estrogen. And number three is an Australian cream called the Anna's Wild Yam Cream. The Anna's Wild Yam Cream is a cream that contains diostenin. And this diostenin, when it is applied to the skin and taken up by the fat cells, it stimulates this pathway in your body that your body uses to make its own progesterone. The Anna's Wild Yam Cream does not contain progesterone. What it does is this diostenin stimulates the pathway that your body uses to make its own progesterone. And by stimulating the production of progesterone, you automatically balance the estrogen, testosterone, adrenal, adrenal hormones, whether you be man or woman. Progesterone's the hormone that that uh, ideally should be stimulated. How long should it be applied for? When I was overseas a few years ago, I met a young girl who was menstruating at nine and I advised her mother put her on the Anna's Wild Yam Cream for at least one year. I met a 92-year-old woman who was on the Anna's Wild Yam Cream. She had osteoporosis. You see, progesterone boosts bone-building cells. So everyone with osteoporosis should consider the Anna's Wild Yam Cream because boosting that progesterone stimulates the bone-building cells. You see, osteoporosis has a hormone factor. What a woman will do is she'll apply it every morning and every night, a third of a teaspoon. And she alternates her spots. So tonight, she might apply it to her face and then in the morning to her throat. Then the next time her chest, next time inside of arms, next time abdomen, next time inside of thighs. So she alternates the site of application of the Anna's Wild Yam Cream and that keeps the body reactive. And she will do this for three weeks a month. If she is still menstruating, she applies it to at these three weeks. And notice it's when the progesterone is the highest and she stops for the week that she is menstruating. If a woman is not menstruating anymore, she just chooses three weeks of the month where she applies the cream. One lady said to me, I tried the Anna's Wild Yam Cream and it didn't work. I said, how long were you on it for? She said, two months. Let me show you what's happening after two months. Remember, the imbalance is like this. After two months, it's probably like that. That's why it's important to be on it for at least a year so we can get that balance around to where it should be. How long will it take? It will depend on many things. Some women have been out of balance for several generations. 
The good news is it won't take several generations to get them back into balance, but it may take a year or two. If a woman is on it for a year and then she stops, and within a couple of weeks her symptoms return, her body is really literally saying, a little bit longer, please. One lady told me that. So she went back on it for another six months. Then she stopped. And when she stopped that time, she found that her symptoms did not return. One lady said to me, thank you for giving me my daughter back. Now, I didn't give her her daughter back. <laughs> I actually showed her the in or I gave her the information. And as she applied it, her daughter's moods certainly became a little bit better because premenstrual tension should not be happening. What about a man? Because men are not cyclic, a man will apply it once a day, like aftershave, and he does not have the break in the month. Why would a man apply the Anna's Wild Yam Cream? Well, excuse the French, but one man said to me, it just puts lead in my pencil. Another man said to me, he decided to begin implementing the Anna's Wild Yam Cream instead of taking his hormone injection that he was taking every three months for prostate cancer. He made a decision to implement these eight laws of health, start having the Anna's Wild Yam Cream every morning. And his wife emailed me 10 months later. She said, we have had amazing results with these simple lifestyle changes. She said, my husband had been having hot flushes four or five a day on the hormone injection. And he was developing breasts. He was late 60s. She said, since we've changed our lifestyle, implemented the laws of health, we're drinking more water, we've stopped our coffee, we start, we're exercising every day, we're going to bed earlier. She said, since we have implemented those lifestyle changes, I also have lost weight. My energy levels are great. But she said, my husband's hot flushes have stopped. His breasts have gone down. And we just had a test for his testosterone levels. And she said they were the best they've been for years. This is on the simple Anna's Wild Yam Cream and changing the lifestyle habits. What I love about this cream is it's working with your body. It's work, working with the needs of your body. It's working with how your progesterone, progesterone works, so it just boosts it. Number four is the eight laws of health. Florence Nightingale called them the laws of nursing. Dr. Jackson from New York, he called them laws of life. They are the eight principles or the eight laws of health. I had a lady come and do our program and she got dramatic changes. All her hot flushes stopped. She started to lose weight. Six months later, she emailed me and she said, Barbara, things have just stopped. So I began to question her on any changes she'd made lately. And she went, oh dear. I said, what is it? She said, I just realized that the last month I've started to have a cup of coffee a day. That one cup of coffee a day with just one teaspoon of sugar a day had been enough to, to stop her body balancing and it had brought the imbalance back again. So this is where the law of temperance comes in, which we'll be looking at tomorrow, looking at the things that can damage the body. And most people are unaware of how dangerous caffeine and sugar are. But they both of themselves, together and of themselves, can cause a disruption in the hormones in the human body. Sometimes I get a woman that rings me back and says, I need a bit more help. There are some herbs that you can take that can give this a boost. One is donkwai. Another one is black cohosh. And another one is red clover. Red clover is a phyto or a plant that contains the diostin and it's quite powerful at helping the balance. Most people 
It is enough to change the lifestyle and implement what I have shown you, but for some people, I guess it can depend on many things, they may need to as well take one of these supplements. I have seen many women regain their life, regain their health, even regain their marriage and their sexual relations by these lifestyle changes. I've also seen many women come off their antidepressants. First of all, changing the lifestyle, implementing the Anna's Wild Yam Cream. As happy hormone levels rise, they begin to ease off their antidepressants and are back in control of their life. That's good news, isn't it? That's very good news. Life should be good. It should be fantastic every single day of our lives. And I'm alarmed at how many are not experiencing peak health because of this hormonal imbalance. 